In this video we're going to discuss piecewise functions and specifically how to graph piecewise functions. So a piecewise function is a function that has um, more, at least two, two or more pieces to it, so or parts to it. So what that means is, um, <clears throat> first of all, it is a function, so it's going to pass the vertical line test when we graph this thing. But the idea is you're going to graph a specific graph over a certain interval, and then you're going to switch and start graphing something else, a different part of that, over a different x interval. Okay, so it's going to look maybe a little disjointed, and when we graph this, but um, <clears throat> it's it is all together going to be a function. So to kind of give you an idea of this, um, I've got these, but I've got both of these pieces graphed in a separate graph here, which I will show you in just a second, but. We have, um, think about y equals x squared, and think about y equals 2x plus 1. Now right now, I have both of those things graphed. y equals x squared, y equals 2x plus 1. And these two things are not, um, together, a single function, because that would not pass the vertical line test, right? There's overlapping where they're, where they're sharing, uh, they're having two different y's given one x, and that can't happen. So, um, so what we have to do is, is restrict the um, domain of each piece so that we have a, a, a function altogether. Okay? And so what that does here is we are doing it if x is less than or equal to 1, we're going to graph x squared. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you what that's going to look like. I only want to graph this if x is less than or equal to 1. So notice it took y equals x squared, which was, was that parabola, and it only graphed it as long as your x's were less than or equal to 1. So everything to the left of 1 is going to use that parabola y equals x squared. But then whenever x becomes greater than 1, we start to graph this 2x plus 1. And I get this, this part, this line 2x plus 1, but again only if x is greater than 1. Now notice what happens is that actually starts at 1, but um, if you notice here at x squared we have the point 1 1 um, and that is because we use that if x is greater than or equal to 1 so actually at 1 I'm supposed to plug in 1 here and get 1 squared which is 1 but up here notice it tells me when the x coordinate is 1 the y coordinate is undefined and so what that means is um, I'm gonna start this graph at 1 even though I'm not supposed to actually plug in 1 into this part I'm still going to start it there, but I'm going to start it with an open circle right there because um, I need to make sure that I'm covering things that would that would happen between 1 and 2. So the, the biggest mistake that people make with this is they start graphing the second one at 2 because they're like, okay, well, x has to be bigger than 1, so I'm going to start at 2. Well, they neglect all of these x values that happen between 1 and 2, which need to be on that graph somewhere. Okay. So when you graph a piecewise function, sometimes it will look like two just completely different graphs thrown together. Um, <clears throat> sometimes they will actually connect. It just depends on what the y value of those functions are going to be, where you switch from one to the other. But sometimes they will connect. Um, but what's important is just notice that all together now, this graph does pass the vertical line test. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how I would go about graphing this. Um, if I if I were doing this by hand. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start at the x value where it switches from one piece to the other, which happens at 1. And I'm going to plot both of these points. So if I were to plug in 1 into, these, into the top piece, I get, I get 1, right? 1, 1. And I'm going to put a point there at 1, 1. I'm also going to plug in 1 into the bottom piece, which would give me um, 2 times 1 plus 1, so that would give me 3. But instead of putting a point there, I'm going to put an open circle because I'm not actually supposed to plug in 1 into that bottom function, right? So I'm going to put it as a placeholder there so I know where to start my graph, but I'm not going to make it a coordinate point because even at x equals 1, we have to have this thing pass the vertical line test. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, after I do that, is I'm going to look at just one piece at a time. So if my x's are less than 1, so to the left of this, I need to be graphing y equals x squared. 
So if I plugged in 0 to that, I would get 0. If I plugged in negative 1, I would get 1. If I plugged in negative 2, I would get 4. And negative 3 would get me 9, and so forth. And everything to the left of 1 is going to fall on that parabola. As soon as we get to 1, we stop. We switch to the 2x plus 1. I start with an open circle because I don't have or equal to with my 1 there. And then I'm going to just graph this off to the right. So this is a line with a slope of 2. So I'm just going to go from this open circle. I'm going to go up 2 and over 1, and up 2 and over 1, and so forth, and keep going. And I'm going to graph that part. Those two things do not connect here. They do not have to connect. So the big mistake, again, that people will make is they just have these points all over the place, and they think that they need to try to connect those all together. Um, they do not. It doesn't have to happen. Okay, so that's the, that is the graph of this function. Again, this passes the vertical line test. This function where we have x squared if x is less than or equal to 1 and 2x plus 1 if x is greater than 1. So here's another example. This one has three parts. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and graph this by hand and then we'll check Desmos and see what that looks like. So we have the, the line y equals 3. We have the line y equals x plus 5, and we have the line y equals negative x. All three of these things are just lines. Um, <clears throat> what happens is at negative 2, it switches from y equals 3 to y equals x plus 5, and then at positive 2, we switch from y equals x plus 5 to y equals negative x. So I'm going to focus at negative 2, and then I'm also going to focus at 2. So anything to the left of 2, we're supposed to use y equals 3. Well, that's just a horizontal line at 3. Um, at negative 2, 3, I'm going to put an open circle there because I'm not supposed to use this if x is actually negative 2, but I need to go all the way up to that with this line that is just y equals 3. So everything to the left of negative 2, we're just going to have this line y equals 3. We get to here, we have an open circle. At negative 2, I'm actually supposed to use this x plus 5. Well, if I plug in negative 2 into x plus 5, I get 3. So that means that I'm just going to fill in this open circle because I get the same y coordinate at negative 2 for both this first piece and the second piece. So where I switch from one to the other, these are actually going to be connected. And again, that can happen. It doesn't have to happen, but it can. So then I'm going to use this y equals x plus 5 for everything between negative 2 and 2. And again, including 2 because I have the or equal to with my 2 as well for that part. Okay, So um, I'm going to go ahead and just plug in the points here. So if I get negative 1, it's going to be 4. 0 would be 5. 1 would be 6. And 2 would be 7. And again, I'm going to put a closed point there because it's or equal to 2. I'm not going to put arrows on this because I'm only graphing this over this finite interval from negative 2 to 2. So I do not put arrows. Arrows mean this thing keeps going. And it doesn't. It's only going from negative 2 to 2, and that is it. Don't put arrows there. <clears throat> then at, at 2, we switch to this negative x. If I were to actually plug in 2 to that, I would get negative 2. I'm going to make that an open circle because we don't have the or equal to with that. And then if x's are greater than 2, we're doing negative x, which means we're just going to have a slope of negative 1 as we go down forever to the right. And that is what that would look like. Um, in Desmos, I have all three of these things graphed. Um, the first one was x is less than negative 2, so that was y equals 3. And then the second one we had... Um, if we were between including negative 2 and 2. And then the third piece was only if x was greater than 2. And this is exactly what we have graphed. Notice these first two pieces actually line up and, and meet each other at negative 2. And then they do not meet up on the, on the second separation, which happens at 2. Desmos is really friendly for helping you graph piecewise functions. It's something that people tend to struggle with because it's completely new and a different concept. But um, graph each piece, but make sure to only do that over the specific interval in which you are supposed to graph it.